what is going on between Nikita and Terrell? What the hell is going on? Literally, everybody's been talking about it. Who's in the right, who's in the wrong, who knows? Fake, 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 fake people. Because everything about me is real. I pray that you get the help that you need because it's not nice to watch you self-sabotage. Hey guys, it's Marad Marani. Hope you guys are all doing well today. A lot of you guys have been messaging me, DMing me, YouTube commenting and so forth, telling me to talk about this particular issue. Now, I'm not one to talk about people's relationships and so forth. I don't feel like it's my place to do so, so I stay out of it. But you can argue they, they you know, put their relationship out there in the public. Therefore, anybody is entitled to talk about it if we want to because they've chosen to do so. And I normally review shows and music and so forth and people related to shows. So this obviously isn't one of them. So... I'm only doing this because a lot of people told me to and it is in demand. So, let me just get straight into this. I do find it quite weird that she began the video with a voice note. Like you said that we're over. By your wishes, my command, man. It is what it is. That clearly shows that the video has been structured, that she's planned this, that she may have recorded the voice note whilst doing so. Maybe it was on phone and she recorded it. It does come off and seem a bit unnatural that she decided to record a voice note, record something and utilise it to her advantage. Um, that was very weird for me, especially the way it opened up as if it was d decorated to show a certain way. It was most definitely impactful, I would, I would say that. And that was the, probably the reason why she put it at the beginning. She remained in character, but what we need to focus on is the body language. I want to I stress on this word. It was nothing short of a dream and I take responsibility for that because the body language and the eye movements that we are seeing here are coming across as very structured and planned yet again. Very frigid, she's not moving as much, she's staying in the same position, she's dressed to look very nice, no harm in doing so but one can easily question the ulterior motives of doing so and she's not moving her body as much, it seems as though everything is planned, she constantly looks up, there's a constant repetitiveness of her eye movements constantly going up, up and up, which people say and studies have shown to prove that people when they look up they're probably lying but that i chose to overlook i saw this community loving gentleman obviously we, i don't know the truth i'm just going on what i'm seeing and tending to judge it and review it but i do find her body language to be quite unnatural to be rehearsed to be structured the eye movements can elicit some forms of lying and some form of instigating which doesn't seem as truthful as i first thought so and it's very weird and off-putting and we have their idea of us trusting about I can imagine him coming I can imagine him coming to my door with a gun to my head. Excuse me, what do you mean? I feel like she and she plastered the entire video with a narrative. The story of a roadman who turned his life around going back to the road my life. This was the narrative that she plastered and she kept on kept on putting it on. It was very interesting how she kept on rehearsing it. She kept on talking about the, this narrative constantly throughout the entire video as if she was trying to lay a certain storyline which was very interesting. I didn't see that coming but you, you kind of click on to the fact that she keeps on doing that and she's building a story so us viewers can be appealed by what she's saying. The idea of him coming with a gun and you know coming to the door she's creating a shroud of doubt for the viewers that's what she's trying to do a shroud of doubt upon his head she's utilizing the fact that he may have been a reform member and using it against him now it was quite interesting to see that as well because it didn't make sense because even i can imagine someone coming to my, my door with a gun to my head like and there's no correlation she talks about how there's these people snapchat hackers and so forth but where are the receipts if you saw it all, provide the receipts. If you're so busy to put a voice note at the beginning of the video and structure the video and talk in a very nice, rehearsed and structured manner, if you have the effort and time to do that, why don't you have the effort and time to provide the receipts? You're saying that this particular person is speaking to other girls, show the conversations because you said that you saw it yourself and if you were so if it was so planned in your head to record a voice note point in the beginning, why wasn't it so planned in your head to prove these receipts? All it takes is five seconds to flash a screenshot of a conversation on the side of a video. Anybody can do it. If they wanted to put their argument to the forefront to show their truth, they would provide the absolute facts which that which that did not happen. Stressed me in the end of her video is and that really did really really did piss me off and I'm gonna go off on a bit of a tangent is that she said that he has BPD. I believe he has borderline personality disorder and that can only be diagnosed professionally. Now I've just graduated in mental health um, my degree was clinical psychology and cognitive neuroscience and what we don't do is we don't throw terms of mentally ill we don't throw 
mentally ill terms on people easily. Number one. Number two, if you want to say BPD, say the full thing, define what BPD is, and bring up your thoughts as to why he feels he has BPD. You did not even go into it. You didn't even explain his characteristics. What's wrong with his mind frame? What's wrong with any, any form of chemicals that may have supported you? But somehow you know what BPD means. You need to support your argument if you're putting it out there. Don't just simply label someone with a mentally turned because it's very irritating. I've had this conversation with many people over the last few weeks and people want to argue or go upset. They pull off that term, oh, you're mentally unwell. That is a big, big mockery to mental health. Big, big mockery to people who are not mentally ill. I know plenty of people. I know plenty of people whose parents aren't mentally ill and children and so forth. To be thrown ill terms shows how um, callous your behaviour actually is. Easily attempting to classify someone with BPD, but you're not providing any reasoning for it. You're not listing down the reasons as to why you thought this person has BPD, which is a very serious disorder. So it was very interesting to see how she was using mentally ill terms and combining that with him being a reformed gang member to just elicit and highlight her narrative of how violent this person is. So that really triggered me and pissed me off because we're not going to do that. Not today, not tomorrow, not never. We're not going to use mentally ill terms and throw them around loosely. It happens in many cultures, it happens in many um, societies where we easily just throw it as a diss and it's not going to happen. Not today, not tomorrow, not never. If you want to throw it around BPD and Nikita, you need to provide your facts, provide your reasoning as to why. Don't just throw it around loosely because it's a mockery to mental health completely and that really pissed me off and did not me the right way at all. Now before we get into Hola Terrell's video, I actually have met Terrell and Nikita myself personally. Um, when I used to work at um, Nike they came in one time and I said I love their videos because I, I didn't watch them avidly but I watched a few and they were quite funny. And when I said that to them, Nikita kind of just brushed, I don't know like, it was, she just, she wasn't rude to me but she just, like she didn't even acknowledge it, like she just kind of ignored it. But Terrell was the one who was saying thank you, you was being, it was like this naturalness that I kind of just got off. Terrell, like, he seemed quite nice and quite healthy. He was being very nice to me. He was like, thank you, I appreciate it. You know, very, very raw. That's what I got from him from that particular instance with these two. And she didn't even acknowledge me. She just kind of just aired off. I was like, whatever. And I was like, wow, okay, cool. And uh, maybe she's bothered. Maybe she doesn't want to talk. That's absolutely fine. Didn't think of anything of her. But I didn't think that she was being so rude as an instance. But what I got off that situation was that Terrell was a very nice person. That's what I felt in me. That he, you know, took the time to say thank you and so forth. Obviously, you might remember, like, it's not a big thing for him, obviously, but I was like, I gathered from that particular moment that he was a nice person. So I feel like that's interesting to put this perspective from me, for me personally. I don't think it's entirely Nikita's fault when a relationship breaks down or when two people show different sides of the story, we as human beings will naturally and subconsciously attempt to cipher out and find out who's in the right, who's in the wrong. That's what we, that, that's what we would do. By nature, that's what we do. So we're obviously looking, we're very keen to see, did she do the wrong thing? Is she the liar? Is he the wrong thing? Is he the right? The problem could be that they both just have different perceptions of the same problem. Therefore, it comes off different. And therefore, we feel like we need to find out. It could be both of them. I personally feel like both of them have had differences, problems, and they still have to separate, whatever, whatever, whatever. I don't know, the way of Tara's video, and he talks about how the mental health accusation was a lie. Mental, mental illness, disorder, whatever, yeah? Imagine I was suffering with mental problems, really, which I'm not. What would I do right now? <laughs> Real rap, if I was suffering with mental stuff, Nikita, yeah, what would I do right now? Like, would, would, it, would this lead me to kill myself? I found that quite interesting. I was like, oh, okay. So she just kind of dropped that in there to just, you know, enhance a narrative. It was a bit weird for me that, that she said that. And he was, and the way Tara was talking and he had, there was no structured tone. He was just being himself, like raw, just how he was. Uh, maybe that's how he is as a person he comes across. But I got that feeling again from him that there was like a, an, an undertone of truthfulness in the way he was speaking. This is how it came to me personally. And again, it was irritating because he was waffling. Um, Nikita wasn't waffling per se, but he was for a good few minutes, which is annoying to say. Again, you're saying that apparently Nikita knows the passwords to your phone stuff, so again, I was interested to find why she said that. Um, you know, she can record voice notes whenever she's got your passwords to stuff. Number one, what does that say about someone if they have all your passwords? Number two, if they have your passwords, why can't they just show the receipts? Um, but yet again, Terrell, you provided no receipts as well, so you know, it is what it is. And you do have a restraining order against you for committing violence upon someone. So that does not work in your favor. If this was in a court of law, this is why I keep imagining it to be in a court of law and you have lawyers defending both of them to see who comes through. That particular lawyer on the Kita side 
will use that to their advantage. If you have a restraining order against you, it does show you that you are a violent person, Tarot, regardless of what you said. You may not have been violent to her, but you have been violent, and that, that does not put you in a good light at all. Therefore, people well, therefore people will easily believe Nikita over you because of the history and the facts and the records. It is what it is. Angry for that second. But you see, after that recording there, it calmed down, and I did apologise. She never put that bit in. But his own narrative of, I'm not coming from that rich life. I'm a hard man, concrete. Everyone's life is hard, whether you like it or not. But this repetitiveness of constantly talking about it to maybe accentuate some sympathy from your viewers is, you know, a bit of an irritant, I would say, myself personally. I don't know why you're constantly talking about it. Okay, we know you're from the hard life, concrete, so forth, etc., 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 etc. But we don't need to keep on hearing it. It was a bit dry. But yeah, that was my particular review on both videos. Overall, I feel like both of them are people who have caused problems. I think it would be a bit silly to constantly cipher out who is the main person who caused the problem because we will never know. It's simple as that. We will never, ever, ever know. There's no point trying to constantly find out who's in the right, who's in the wrong, who's in the right, who's in the wrong. But I feel like the Nikita's video was very, very irritating, very weird. Um, number one, the voice not at the beginning, the structure nonsense that we do not need loosely throwing around mental terms without any reasoning or fact, no receipts provided at all, body language, the eye movements, you know, the tears, you know, it didn't seem as genuine to me, but it is what it is, people can think, whatever. Then we've got Terrell's video, a truthfulness undertone in his voice, yes, but no receipts as well, saying he's not violent to her, but you've got a restraining order, so what's next? Like, your records show you otherwise, so, and you're waffling for quite a while as well, you didn't really get to the facts, and, you know, a lot of people saying that you're kind of cost narcissistic, so there are plenty of facts that we can play for and against for both people. But yeah, that's my, that's my impartial view of both of the people. Um... Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Hit me up on my Snapchat, my Twitter, on my website. Let me know what you guys think. Um, I don't know. I just I'm, I find them both irritating to be honest in the videos. Both of them will, you know, have their flaws. Both of them have their good points. It is what it is. That's just that's just the bitter truth that we can get to as viewers. We won't know. There's always a third part of the story that we just simply won't know. I can only review what I'm coming. What I'm coming off, and it feels like Nikita's a bit structured, a bit fake. But yet again, she kept saying the truth. Then we have um, Terrell as well, who waffling, not really getting to the point, saying he's not violent, but he clearly is, and the rate of being from the concrete and the floor, like, we don't need that. But I just, I'm just sensing a truthfulness undertone from him, more so, than, more so than Nikita. That's just what I'm getting. I feel like he's telling more of the truth than she is. Um, I feel like there's more than meets the eye with Nikita. So, interesting. Let me know what you guys think, and I'll catch you guys soon.